shaken yet standing firm. This is Radio Cayman in the Cayman Islands. For the Record is brought to you by Fidelity Bank. For all your banking and pension needs, call or visit a Fidelity branch today. Vamped Motors, the only authorized Ford and Toyota dealership serving the Cayman Islands. And Cayman Pharmacy Group, with locations in West Base and Professional Pharmacy at CTMH Doctors Hospital. The Cayman Pharmacy Group has a location for you just around the corner. And Seaboard Marine. With over 35 shipping ports, find your shipping solution by calling Seaboard Marine at 949-4977. Coming to you live from Radio Canaan Studio. For the record. For the record. For the record. Here, Here from, from your, your government, government officials, officials, independents, and the opposition on issues that matter to you. For the record. Engage in an open dialogue between residents and lawmakers. For the record. For the record. For the record. Informative, impartial, insightful. This is your talk show. 1 800 534 8255. Your calls, your input. This is For the Record. And now, your host, Arit Connor. Good morning and welcome to For the Record. Today is Monday, the eighth day of October 2018. I trust that everyone had an enjoyable uh, weekend, uh, some mixed uh, weather this weekend as well, rain uh, on Saturday, rain on Sunday, and of course today we have uh, pretty windy uh, conditions as well. Certainly makes the air feel very cool and uh, we welcome that as well for those of you who have to continue to run the air conditioning and everything else. Uh, Hopefully you will save on your electricity bills with this little cool weather that we're having as well. I want to thank you, our listening and viewing audience, for allowing Radio Cayman and, by extension, for the record, into your homes, into your vehicles as you traverse the busy roads of the Cayman Islands, into your places of work, whether it be an office cubicle or if you're working in the outdoors. For the record... As you know, it's a show produced by the staff and management of Radio Cayman, and it is geared towards keeping you abreast of issues as they arise and play out on the local, regional, and international scene. I am your host, Dorit Connor, and you're welcome to join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 7.30 a.m. until 9.30 a.m. Our phone lines are always open. There is always someone there waiting to take your calls. Nine times out of ten, it's going to be that beautiful radio voice of Miss Susan Watson. You can call us on our toll-free number provided courtesy of Flow. That toll-free number is 1-800-534-8255. You can also call us on 949-8037 and 949-6990. If you don't like to talk on a telephone, email us at For the Record. That is one word, For the Record, at C-A-N-D-W dot K-Y. We also have A WhatsApp number, that WhatsApp number is 9253261, where we encourage you to send us a text message or leave us a voice note, the contents of which will be played during the course of the show as well. And of course, you can follow us on YouTube simply by subscribing to Radio Cayman live stream as well. And uh, we're thankful uh, for us, Cayman Airways. And the Cayman Airways are now offering daily, daily, I repeat, daily nonstop flights from Grand Cayman to New York City starting this December. So call Cayman Airways reservations at 949-2311, contact a travel agent, or visit caymanairways.com to book your flights today. Daily nonstop flights to New York City. What better service can you ask for than that? So, again, book your reservations with Cayman Airways for New York City. As you've heard, we will have the Honorable Alden McLaughlin, Premier of the Cayman Islands, with us, as well as the Deputy Premier and uh, Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Moses Kukernel, sorry, They will both be with us this morning on the show, and until we get them on board, we're going to have uh, some open mic 
Um, and this will give you an opportunity to call in, voice your opinions, voice your concerns, ask any questions uh, that you may have as well. I'll just simply go back to uh, Friday's show, and um, we had one of our callers, one of our listeners, who wrote in, and I think this comment had to do with the possible loss of jobs. And it says, uh, when persons state that 4,000 Caymanians would lose jobs, money, cars, homes, etc., my question is, who are these Caymanians? Was it the poor Caymanians who struggle every day or uh, were, were it they, the rich Caymanians, it makes a big difference who uh, who they were helping. Um, I think this may have been in relation to the talk about uh, Cayman General um, Insurance and ensuring that the company did not um, collapse after Hurricane Ivan due to the claims that government had against it and the fact that the company was not in a position to uh, fully honor that claim as well. Uh, so this person is concerned whether or not it was just the um, the rich Caymanians or the poor, poor Caymanians. And of course, everyone, uh, irrespective of... Uh, their position in life, uh, uh, mainly their economic position, are facing challenges. We see here, for instance, in uh, Bermuda, there's an article in the Royal Gazette uh, today that speaks to the fact that seniors in Bermuda are drowning in debt. And I'm sure that many people, uh, or some people in the Cayman Islands, will say that uh, seniors here are experiencing challenges as well. We see one article in the BBC that talks about young people, and despite the fact that they're able to afford a 10% uh, down payment, the 10% deposit that is required for the purchase of a house, many of them still cannot afford to own a home, despite the fact that they have the down payment because of the additional costs that are associated with that as well. Let's look at the um, the article on uh, Bermuda and the fact that seniors are drowning in debt. It says seniors struggle with uh, struggling with debt are appearing in court more and more, a top judge has warn, warned. Senior Magistrate Juan Wolf said, he was concerned by an apparent increase in elderly debtors landing in court. He added that limited pensions to cover health care and utilities costs were an issue and that in some cases family members may be taken advantage of older relatives. Does that sound familiar? Happens here in the Cayman Islands as well. Mr. Wolf said that the ma uh, makeup of debtors' court had changed in the past few years, although he still saw frequent flyers who must be warned uh, they could face jail. He told the Royal Gazette, I'm starting to get a bit concerned about the pattern of elderly people who come to court, people who owe money. That's kind of sad because they can't get employment. So they are like 70, 75, and can't get a job but owe monies for hospital bills, telephone, utilities. Um, their pensions only go so far, so it's um, racking up. The sad cases are when the landlord has had to take the very uncomfortable decision to evict them from their homes and the elderly person doesn't have anywhere to go. The immediate family is not really there uh, to support. In those cases, I do not tell them about the consequences. I just don't want to. Mr. Wolf 
has noticed the trend over the past year and that it affected people aged between 65 and 85. He added, we're living longer. Persons need to take care of themselves. There's so much of a breakdown in the family unit, which, makes, which means that people aren't really taking care of the elderly persons. Um, and the article goes on and on. I want, I want to uh, stick on that issue about taking care of uh, elderly persons. We see situations here in the Cayman Islands as well where younger family members take advantage of elderly uh, persons. They either misappropriate monies that are intended for elderly persons or they use property, usually mainly land, for their own purposes, tie it up in terms of using it as collateral, <clears throat> and in some instances, losing the property to creditors simply because they then default on those as well. And we know <clears throat> that September was the year, uh, uh, is it September or October, the, the month uh, where we celebrate um, elderly persons, and uh, October, October is the month, thank you, uh, Miss Susan, for that. October is the month that we celebrate elderly persons. And uh, more and more emphasis needs to be placed on protecting our elderly. We continuously talk about the contributions that our older people made to the Cayman Islands in terms of building the Cayman Islands are seamen, or veterans. Uh, we recently had on, on uh, for the record, on Wednesday, members of the Cayman Islands Veterans Association as well. We know that contributions that they have made towards developing the Cayman Islands, making the Cayman Islands what they are today. And the question is, are we doing enough for them now that they find themselves in a vulnerable position. In times past, it was always the family that looked after their own, their elderly persons. Now we have a tendency to want to take them, put them in a nursing home. Now we find that more and more we're relying on carers to take care of our elderly uh, persons, and what happens? They end up forming a bond and, a f and an affinity with their carers, more so than with family members as well. So all extremely important in ensuring that we take care of our elderly persons. We saw uh, part of this article w that I read, you know, where people are living longer, you have people it's age 70, age 75, still needing employment. What are we doing to encourage businesses to continue to employ people beyond the mandatory retirement age? What is the government doing to uh, continue to employ persons who can make significant contribution towards a business entity, be it government or be it uh, in, in the private sector? What are we doing to assist those as well? We shouldn't just render lip service to taking care of our elderly. And remember, remember that at some point in time, if you are fortunate to live long enough, you're going to get old as well. So you're going to find yourself in the same position, um, if not sooner, then certainly later as well. We're going to take a break, folks. Please stay tuned. For the record, we'll be back shortly. The Cayman Islands boasts of a long, colorful, and rich history. In tribute to our roots, Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands, is pleased to bring you the historical vignette series sponsored by Cayman National Bank. Visit Cayman National Bank today for all of your financial needs. The Cayman Islands, he hath founded it upon the seas. Captain Swanson Curry Ebanks, 1914 through 1989. 
Curry Ebanks was the oldest of 10 children of John Audnett and Celestia Elvira Ebanks and attended West Bay Primary School. Taught by some of the great Caymanian Sea captains, he took command of his first ship at 17. He qualified as a master mariner at 21 and continued his life at sea until a car accident terminated his maritime career in 1960. He married three times and was widowed twice, and he fathered eight children. He is best remembered for his victorious battle with the 1944 hurricane, which overtook his ship, the Jemson, en route from Swan Island to Grand Cayman. At the height of the storm, he decided to demast the ship to prevent it from rolling over, which would have meant certain death for everyone aboard. During the next eight days, the ship had to be demasted three times. Each time, Captain Curry had the sails put into a seaman's bag and attached to the bow to function as a sea anchor, guiding the ship purely by dead reckoning when the storm subsided and he got his first confirmed sighting, he was five miles off East End. Radio Cayman's Historical Facts Vignettes are proudly brought to you by Cayman National with branches on all three Cayman Islands. Visit Cayman National Bank today for all of your financial needs. It's more than what we do. It's who we are. We were your official bank of the quincentennial celebrations in 2003. We were your bank of the year four times. We were voted as the inaugural top employer in 2010. We were the inaugural business of the year awardee in 2017. Who are we? We are Cayman National, your local bank, proudly serving you for over 40 years. It's because of you that our journey continues. You remember the sale at Vamp Motors? Yeah, the Your Sale, Your Choice, the one where you can get cash back or can put the savings to extend the warranty or upgrade features? Yes, it's still going on, but now you can get $8,000 off a new Ford Ranger truck. $8,000, you know? You for real? Come see for yourself while they still have so much to choose from from now through October. Save big during Your Sale, Your Choice at Vamp Motors. With almost every vehicle on sale, you decide whether to get your dream ride at its lowest price. Take cash back at Add years to the warranty or service plan. Choose an add-on or mix your options. Your sale, your choice. Because you know what you need and Vamped Motors will help you drive it home. Vamped Motors on Walker's Road. At Seaboard Marine, customers often ask us questions about their shipments. Can you explain what a left and container load is for shipment and what your minimum charge is? Sure. A less than container load, or LCL, is any overseas shipment that does not require the full space of a container. At Seaboard, we have great rates for small packages. Just let us know the dimensions of your package and we'll help you out from there. Shipping shore to shore, Are you kidding me? What's wrong? I ran out of my meds and I have an interview in about an hour. Why not call CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy? They'll be able to help. You think so? Absolutely. Their pharmacists are brilliant for fast, efficient and professional service. CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy provides you with more than just prescriptions. We strive to make your health our concern. We recognize the complexities of pharmaceuticals and the need to personalize your care. That is why we offer personalized one-on-one counseling. Call us today or visit our website at caymanpharmacy.com. A trip to New York City is the experience of a lifetime. Starting this December, Cayman Airways will be offering daily nonstop flights from Grand Cayman to New York City. That's right. Cayman Airways is going daily to New York City starting this December. Stroll through Central Park or take in the bright lights of Times Square. Enjoy a Broadway show or visit museums, the Empire State Building, and so much more. Whether you're visiting for business or pleasure, you'll fall in love with New York City. And daily nonstop flights from Grand Cayman aboard Cayman Airways starting this December. For details and to book, call Cayman Airways Reservations at 949-2311. Contact a travel agent or visit caymanairways.com. Cruise tourism is a vital part of Cayman's economy. It is the government's responsibility to create an environment where our people can have an opportunity to grow and prosper today, tomorrow, and into the future. It is a myth that Cayman does not need cruise tourism. It is a fact that cruise passengers spend $200 million per year buying services from small businesses, tour operators, attractions, restaurants, and retail shops. Those funds stay right here, supporting our economy and communities. 
Support the pairs. Support our tourism. System one 1-800-534-8255. What is on your mind when it comes to the government, independence, and the opposition? Issues that matter to you. 1-800-534-8255. Waiting to hear from you. For the record, with your host, Arit Connor. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. It is my distinct pleasure to have in the studio with me. And I'm not sure that, uh, I can't remember the last time that we had this combination on here before, but it is my pleasure to have in the studio with me this morning, Honorable Alden McLaughlin, Premier of the Cayman Islands, and Honorable Moses Kakarna, Dep- Kakarnal, Deputy Premier and Minister of Tourism as well. Gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Morning, Osi. Good to be here. It's been a, quite a while since I've, I've been here. And uh, lots of things have been happening, and I have been doing some traveling my, myself on behalf of the government, and so I thought it was an opportune time to, to come and essentially report and talk a little bit about not just the, the actual trips, but government's overall strategy and, and approach to the continued development of, of international trade and, and, and commerce and, and some of the diplomatic um, opportunities that these these occasions present in terms of promoting building relationships and continuing to promote these islands uh, the deputy premier himself has also been doing some some traveling in furtherance of the same mm-hmm. mission although uh, albeit with respect to his particular portfolio and so that and with with, with many topical things including the the continued controversy about the proposed construction of the cruise berthing we thought that um, we'd come and, and provide a, a double-barreled approach to, <laughs> to these issues and to, to be able to not just articulate what the government's position is, but to field calls and, and, and hopefully address the range of concerns that, that are around mm-hmm. with respect to the cruise birthing facility and other things. Okay. And morning, Mr. Kukarno. Good morning, O.C. Thank you very much for the invitation to be here this morning. Looking forward to it. Uh, of course, I have to get started with a big shout-out to Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. Definitely. <laughs> definitely <laughs> want to. Uh, Premier, uh, uh, talking about uh, your, your travels overseas, and we know there are things like the RIMS conference, uh, the um, various uh, shows, uh, shipping registry and everything. Uh, for those persons who are under the impression that it is just a jaunt, you mm-hmm. know, for you, can can you explain to our audience the importance of having the head of government at some of these uh, events to uh, what it does in terms of reassurance to the persons that we are seeking to have an interest in doing business in the Cayman Islands, your presence being there as opposed to just simply the head of the, um, whether it be a statutory um, authority or government company being there as opposed to to having the head of government there. Uh, Thank you, Ozzy. The first thing, (laughs) you you use the term Johnson, and, you know, I, I smile um, Riley, when I when I hear that sort of criticism uh, leveled in in the media or or elsewhere, the, the truth of the matter is I don't I don't particularly enro- enjoy traveling. Th- this gets old, quite frankly. <laughs> it really does get old, and and it is a lot of of work uh, most of the most of the time. Um, because when you when you travel on behalf of government, you you've gone as an ambassador of the country, and as I am the at the head of the elected government. The level of responsibility is that even that much greater, mm-hmm. but uh, it is, I think, a critically important part of of the job that, as premier and as deputy premier, uh, we have to do in terms of promoting the Cayman Islands and continuing to to develop both business and diplomatic relationships. Increasingly, uh, Cayman has taken responsibility for international affairs. And I think in the in the wake, well, we're not in the wake of it yet, but we we'll surely be in the wake of Brexit in particular, um, we can expect that the UK is going to, is simply not going to be in a position to 
with its own issues to to concentrate on on us mm-hmm. um, in that respect. So we have we have always, uh, as long as I can remember, Cayman has always done um, significant promotion overseas with respect to financial services and res- with respect to tourism. But since we took office, we have developed a deliberate, uh, a more deliberate strategy. So it's not just a um, a one-off thing or that we run off to the RIMS conference or, or, or somebody does that, but an overall strategy aimed at increasing um, our presence and, uh, and building our profile overseas. So what we are promoting is brand Cayman. Cayman provides a, a suite of services and, and opportunities and experiences which 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 um can fill the eye um <laughs> believe it or not most people who actually come to do business in your country or to invest in your country don't just come for us for do not do not just want a specific thing or experience they they come because they 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 think Cayman is let's use an example that that Cayman is a is a good place to set up a company or or a business but when they come they enjoy the beaches they enjoy the the, the weather they enjoy their various experiences here um they find that they, that not only is that particular business um is it useful to them to to establish that particular company or, or business here but there are other opportunities and so brand Cayman is 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 very very important so when when we see the the flags the Cayman flags on the on the sterns of of yachts around the world um that is a major promotion of brand mm-hmm. Cayman mm-hmm. Uh, that, as an example um which i've just had i, I mean I, I had the experience of a feeling like, like i should actually salute Every time I I walk past a a, <laughs> a, a, a vessel in, in in Monaco, and I walk for over an hour, and I I just never reach the end of of this. I mean, it's just so in, incredible, incredible. But um, Cayman's brand is strong out there, but we cannot be complacent, and we we must do everything that we possibly can to continue to to promote it. The fact that uh, that the crown prince of probably the richest state small though it is, um, in, in Europe, came to the Cayman Islands reception in, in Monaco. Because I was there is, I think, um, a real good example of how important it is for, for the person in this role, for I only will hold the role for another two, two years and eight months maximum, uh, to do these things. Um, it was, and I, I, I talked to him for well over an hour, um, it was because he he says he he um is so impressed by what the Cayman shipping registry has been able to achieve and Cayman is in Europe the second highest rated uh, shipping registry um as far as they as they're concerned the only one who has a better rating than us this year is France and last year we were actually the top rated registry um and and France was second so we we're swapping in and out um the UK is much further, further down the the list. So, brand Cayman is strong, but it's our job to continue to promote it, to to promote doing business in Cayman, continue to build the profile of these islands as we take an increasingly important place uh, on the world stage. Folks, I want to remind you that you're listening to For the Record. I'm your host, Art Connor. My guest in the studio with me this morning. Premier of the Cayman Islands, the Honorable Alden McLaughlin, and Deputy Premier of the Cayman Islands, the Honorable Moses Kukerno. We're going to our 8 o'clock news. When we return, the conversation will continue, and we certainly welcome your calls, welcome your questions. We just simply ask you to be respectful in your approach uh, when you call in. Please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back immediately after the 8 o'clock news. Thank you, Mr. Connor. And studio time now by Price Right is 8 a.m. 
Price Right is Grand Cayman's warehouse shopping superstore. Making your dollar go further with huge savings and no membership fees. Get more of the things you use every day at the right price. But it's not just grocery and health and beauty. Price Right has a full range of products from office to automotive, patio furnishings to kitchen appliances, and even electronics. And since warehouse prices mean savings for you, everything is priced right at Price Right. Grand Cayman's warehouse shopping superstore. Your community. News and information. Radio K Man is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio K Man. Checking weather, Tropical Storm Michael is tossing some weather our way as a hurricane watch is issued for the Florida Panhandle. At the last check, the center of Tropical Storm Michael was located by an Air Force Reserve Hurricane Hunter aircraft near latitude 20.6 degrees north, longitude 85.5 degrees west. Michael is moving toward the north near 7 miles per hour. A northward motion at a slightly faster forward speed is expected through Tuesday night, followed by a northeastward motion on Wednesday and Thursday. On the forecast track, the center of Michael will move northward across the Yucatan Channel later today and then across the eastern Gulf of Mexico this evening through Wednesday. Michael is expected to move inland over the Florida Panhandle or Florida Big Bend area on Wednesday and then move northeastward across the southeastern United States Wednesday night and Thursday. Data from the Hurricane Hunter aircraft indicates that maximum sustained winds have increased to 70 miles per hour. Additional strengthening is forecast and Michael is expected to become a hurricane later today. This storm poses no immediate threat to the Cayman Islands and the local weather service is continuing to monitor the progress of Tropical Storm Michael as we are feeling some weather effects, including cloudy skies and a 40 percent chance of showers and thunderstorms today. In other news, delayed garbage collection is expected to be addressed today. The Department of Environmental Health is apologizing to residents of areas of Grand Cayman affected. These included places like Central Georgetown, Windsor Park, Mahogany Way, Patrick Island, and also homes up the east-west arterial and Hearst Road. The DEH says these delays were caused by staff absenteeism. The management of the DEH says it is working to ensure that normal collections resume today. And it's a very special group photo on the steps of the Government Administration Building, giving a visual boost to the Family Resource Center's annual anti-bullying campaign. Organizers have been selling pink stood-up shirts to raise funds for awareness and education activities. FRC Coordinator Charmay Miller speaks with CIGTV. Days like these are important because it creates an opportunity for dialogue. Um, bullying is something that oftentimes we shy away from talking about, whether it happens in the workplace, whether it happens in the school or within our community. It is a hard topic to talk about, but the idea of wearing a, a, a t-shirt that says see something or do something already creates for that opportunity to talk about how we can take a stand against bullying and what we can do so that we're, we're living in a society that's more inclusive and socially acceptable for individual differences. Find out more about this month's Stood Up events at the FRC's Facebook page. Now with a check of international news, here's the BBC who will take us out of the newscast. I'm Carsley Fuller from Radio Cayman's Newsroom. BBC News with Jerry Smith. An 85-year-old former doctor in Spain has been found guilty of stealing a child and selling it to an infertile couple during the Franco dictatorship. Eduardo Vela was acquitted of the charges due to the length of time it took to bring the case to court. Scientists have issued their most extensive warning yet of the dangers of global warming. The UN panel said unprecedented changes in society were required in order to limit climate change. The Nobel Economics Prize has been awarded to two U.S. economists. William Nordhaus has explored the economic implications of climate change. Paul Romer's work has looked at the forces behind the development of knowledge and technology which promote growth. The Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says the four Russians who were accused by Dutch intelligence of hacking and deported were in fact just specialists on a routine visit to The Hague and they were not trying to hide. He called the whole thing a misunderstanding, adding that Moscow never received any protest from The Hague back in April when it all happened. Zimbabwe's central bank says it has released $40 million to pay for fuel in an, eff in an effort to end one of the worst fuel shortages in recent years. There have been long queues at petrol stations. Armed forces in Libya say they've captured one of Egypt's most wanted jihadi militants, Hisham al-Ashmawi was seized in the city of Derna. 
His militant group, Ansar al-Islam, said it was behind the recent killings of a number of Egyptian policemen. The head of a detachment of US Marines in northern Australia has been relieved of his command for drink driving. Colonel James Schnell failed a breath test when he was stopped by police after a night out in the city of Darwin last week. And those are the latest stories from BBC News. Access. What's happening in your community? News and information, music and more. You can find us. www.radiokman.gov.ky Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Radio Cayman is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. Did you know that you can download free hurricane preparedness brochures from the Water Authority's website? Visit us online at www.waterauthority.ky to learn more about how you can prevent damage and minimize danger in the event of a storm. Prepared. Be aware. Be safe. This hurricane preparedness tip is brought to you by Water Authority Cayman, suppliers of the world's most popular drink. In financial news, global stocks declined today on investor concerns about more possible U.S. interest rate hikes. Keeping score, Germany's DAX fell 0.6% to 12,040, and France's CSE 40 lost 0.6% to 5,325. London's FTSE 100 retreated 0.3% to 7,298. On Friday, the DAX lost 1.1%, and the CSE 40 dropped 1%. The FTSE 100 fell 1.3 percent. On Wall Street, the future for the Standard & Poor's 500 index was down 0.2 percent, and that for the Dow Jones Industrial Average was off 0.3 percent. Looking at Asia's day, the Shanghai Composite Index tumbled 3.7 percent to 2,716, and Hong Kong's Hang Seng retreated 1.4 percent to 26,201. Japanese markets were closed for a holiday. Seoul's Kospi was off 0.6 percent to 2,253. In energy, benchmark U.S. crude tumbled 79 cents to 73.54 per barrel in electronic trading on the New York Mercantile Exchange. The contract shed one cent to 74.34 on Friday. Brent crude used to price international oils dropped 1.8 to 83 dollars and eight cents. It lost 42 cents the previous session to 84.16. And in currencies, the dollar edged down to 113.69 yen from Friday's 113.71. The euro declined to 1.1490 from 1.1523. At Kirk's Home Center, we can make your life much better. We got it all together. We got a great deal in store for you. This October at Kirk Home Center, get grilling with a smokeless grill for fifty six forty nine. dollars Save on power tools with Milwaukee's two-tool combo kits, complete with contractor bags starting at $235.59. Hang fresh-pressed clothes or dry clothes on a garment rack for $27.99 and store away items in an 18-gallon storage tote for $9.69. The NCBO needs your help. Tune in to the annual Radio Telethon on Saturday, October 20th at 7 p.m. for the best in local entertainment, including CNB, Trinity, Little Magic, Roy Bodden, and High Tide. Call in to pledge any amount or donate online at caymangiftcertificates.com to be entered to win over $5,000 worth of prizes. The NCBO's annual Radio Telethon is broadcasted live from Prospect Playhouse on Radio Cayman and Cayman 27. The NCBO is one of Cayman's oldest charities dedicated to the care, education, and well-being of children and families in need of support. Tune in to Radio Cayman and please help us help our children. The annual Radio Telethon, Saturday, October 20th, 7 p.m. to midnight, live from Prospect Playhouse. Your weather update after 8 is brought to you by Brand Source Home Gallery, creating elegant bathrooms with European-style fixtures and fittings. Brand Source Home Gallery has been appointed the exclusive Cayman supplier for Durovit bathroom products. Durovit is the leading international manufacturer of bathroom ceramics, tubs, and showers recognized around the world for beautiful, functional products. Winner of top industry awards, Durovit collaborates with leading European designers to provide the most elegant and innovative bath products. If you're ready to bring style, comfort, and innovation to your bathroom, visit Brand Source Home Gallery to see the new Durovit showroom and meet the in-house 
house bath designer. Whether you're planning a functional family bathroom or a personal spa retreat, browse the Durevit collection and be inspired. Brand Source Home Gallery, delivering a new standard in custom designed bathrooms. Brand Source Home Gallery, Dorsey Drive, Industrial Park. Good morning and time now for the latest weather report. Current temperature is 84 degrees. Relative humidity is 81%. Barometric pressure 29.78 inches and rising. The wind is southeast at 14 knots. Overnight low temperature was 85 degrees. Synopsis indicate cloudiness and showers associated with Tropical Storm Michael will continue to influence the Cayman weather conditions for the next 24 hours as the storm moves north across the Western Caribbean. Tropical Storm Michael is expected to emerge over the southeast Gulf of Mexico sometime tonight and radar images show mainly isolated showers over the Cayman area with a large area scattered showers noted about 75 miles west of the Cayman area and another to the northwest of the sister islands of Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. Showers are moving mainly towards the north. The National Hurricane Center is issuing advisories on Tropical Storm Michael, which at 7 this morning was located near 20.9 north, 85.1 west. It's about 282 miles west-northwest of Grand Cayman, or about 70 miles south of the western tip of Cuba. The storm is currently moving towards the north at 7 miles per hour, with maximum sustained winds near 70 miles per hour. This storm poses no immediate threat to the Cayman Islands. However, the Cayman Islands National Weather Service will continue to monitor the progress of Tropical Storm Michael. Another forecast for the Cayman Islands for today calling for cloudy skies with a 40% chance of showers and thunder. Temperatures will rise to the upper 80s. Your winds will be south to southeast, 10 to 15 knots with higher gusts. Seas will be moderate with wave heights of 3 to 5 feet, becoming rough with wave heights of 4 to 6 feet, especially in and around heavy showers. Tonight, pretty much the same cloudy skies with a 40% chance of showers and some thunder, and temperatures will fall to the upper 70s tonight. Your winds will be south to southeast at 10 to 15 knots. Higher gusts are expected in and around heavy showers, and seas will be moderate with wave heights of 3 to 5 feet, becoming rough with wave heights of 4 to 6 feet, especially in and around heavy showers. Small craft should exercise caution over the open waters for today and tonight as well. High tide will be this morning at 8.58, low tide this afternoon at 4 minutes past 3, and a high tide again tonight at 8.52. The sun will set this evening at 6 minutes past 6, and will rise tomorrow morning at 6.19. And the outlook is calling for a decrease in cloudiness and showers from tomorrow morning, as Tropical Storm Michael moves over the central Gulf of Mexico. And that's the very latest on your weather report. Your weather update after 8 is brought to you by Brand Source Home Gallery, creating elegant bathrooms with European style fixtures and fittings. Good morning once again, and let's take a look what's happening on your roads. Just past the Tomlinson roundabout. Traffic steady and further down as you approach the Linford Pearson Highway. Heavy, heavy traffic. Oh, and so some slight delays expected as you head on down to Georgetown. Coming off Bobby Thompson Way, traffic is steady but flowing, as well as Agnes Way. Crew Road, busy, busy traffic. And on the Westbury Road in front of the Ritz, traffic flowing moderately in both directions. And into Georgetown on Shedden Road, steady but flowing traffic. And out of Georgetown on Shedden Road, traffic light to moderate. Moderate flow of traffic as well on Godfrey Nixon Way and Eastern Avenue. If you're coming from the West Bay four-way stop, expect light to moderate traffic flow and light traffic heading towards the West Bay four-way stop. On North Sun Road, traffic is moderate. On Edward Street, moderate flow of traffic. Holder Avenue traffic also flowing moderately as well as on Thomas Russell Avenue and Elgin Avenue, moderate flow of traffic as well. That's the very latest on your traffic. Join us again at about 10 minutes after 12 as we update you what's happening on your roads. Have a good morning and look out for the car in front of you and the car in the back of you.
Explore the past, present, and future of globalization at the 6th Annual Cayman Investment Forum, Thursday, October 11th. Can globalization survive? Are disputes over trade and immigration here to stay? How will geopolitical events affect the world economy and Cayman's financial markets? With keynote speakers discussing these topics, the Cayman Investment Forum gives insight and advantage to the changes in the global financial world. For tickets to the conference on Thursday, October 11th, and for more information, visit caymaninvestmentforum.com. Discounted tickets available for Radio Cayman listeners. Just register with the promo code MONEYSENSE. That's money, S-E-N-S-E. One word in capital letters to save 10% off regular ticket costs. In local sports, the Save Our Youth Foundation is hosting its fourth annual Monster Dash 5K Walk Run fundraiser at Caymana Bay on October 20th. Registration on the day begins at 6.15 a.m. with both walkers and runners starting at 7 o'clock, but taking off in opposite directions. All participants are encouraged to wear costumes for the family-friendly event. The race is open to all, with strollers and children welcome. All proceeds will help fund soy programs, including school soy clubs, which offer forums for students to discuss issues affecting them. In addition, SOY brings in various mentors to motivate and inspire young people. They also ask to perform community service and have helped promote and organize the Monster Dash and will be volunteering on the day. The race is made up of a loop through Caymana Bay and the Cayman International School starting and ending between Cayman National Bank and the main DART office at 89 Nexus Way. To register online, head to caymanactive.com slash monster dash. The cost is $20 for adults and $15 for students ages 10 through 18, with children under 10 for free. Registration on the day of the event is $25 for adults. There will be prizes for best overall costume, best family costume, and first runner. Water and snacks will be provided at the end of the race with a water stop at the turnaround. The nonprofit Save Our Youth was founded in 2005 with a mandate of empowering Cayman's youth by facilitating them to be positive leaders, entrepreneurs, and law-abiding citizens who value themselves. Initiating system for information that matter. For the record with Orit Connor continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record in the studio with me this morning, Premier of the Cayman Islands, the Honorable Alden McLaughlin, and Deputy Premier of the Cayman Islands, Honorable Moses Kukernel. We have one caller, so we're going to go straight to the phone lines. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Yeah, good morning, um, Mr. O.C. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, um, Mr. Alden McLaughlin, Honorable Premier, and Mr. Moses, Deputy. Morning. Um, Morning. My name is Paula. I have a small little tour and tax the business called Brown Sugar Tours. I do tours extensively, east to west to east. Now, we don't have any cruise ships in port today. I tell people, think about the amount of revenue that we lost. And it's not just me, shops, restaurants. I know that if we don't have proper infrastructure in place, and we have already started this. Um, I think both of you can correct me, but um, I would like to say at this moment that with the two biggest pillars, tourism, financial, uh, Mr. McLaughlin, you just came back. I appreciate your stewardship that you have to continue to update your profile. We cannot be complacent that we are so big we cannot be replaced. I understand where you all are coming from with Brexit, that England not going to be able to help us. Right now they're doing very little as that as possible. And with you having a fight um, in England right now with them trying to impose things that, you know, it would damage us. So I want to thank you. I know it's easy. I don't think I could be in either you or the Deputy Premier shoe. You take your licks very gracefully, and I appreciate the warriors that you both are and the stewardship that you provide. But we need to continue to improve on tourism and the financial sector. Yesterday, Celebrity was in harbor. I had eight people on tour from England. So I questioned them, gave them the history and culture now. So I said, um, 
May I ask the question, how do you all feel about Brexit? I decided to mention it, you know, and I said, if you don't want to answer, it's okay. And they said, well, um, we are going to do as what we did, go and find business elsewhere because, you know, um, we don't want the European Union dictating to us as they are doing. Our man of value would go down. So anywhere we can grab, we're going to grab and take. That was their exact words. So I can tell Mr. McLaughlin, I can understand the fight you were getting, or you're presently getting with them trying to impose, because um, I know that we also owe them money uh, by next, I don't know if it's going to be June next year or whatever, but we need to have things in place that if they can't help us, knowing that we, um, that we are a country, not just, we are a, a top preferred choice for tourism and financial services, but we need um, our infrastructure, our roads, our hotels, our airport, our bursting facility. Mm-hmm. Now, um, uh, Mr. Premier, my question is to you, how many years has this thing been in debate about having a cruise ship here? I haven't seen anybody come forward. They have opposed everything. I, I just believe that if we continue down this way, um, they, you know, there's a lot of talk that the cruise ships are bullies. Um, at the same time, we can't really do without them. Caller, call, I have a question for you. You said that you had um, a, a tour yesterday of eight persons. Was that pre-booked or uh, did you um, get them simply by being in, in, the, in the area? I, I can personally tell you, Mr. O.C., that the, um, uh, the Honorable Deputy Premier has put in place, has been doing a lot of things to improve and enhance the Mankind product. He has a booth down there at the port that these people, we come up and we promote this. And so these were walk-offs. Mm-hmm. So when I carry these people, Mr. O.C., on a tour, I'm also taking them to not only government attractions, but their shops, business owners, everybody gets a piece of the pie. Even what I get, I spend it. So a lot of the money, within the time that they're here, you cannot use that and say, well, it's not like the ones who stay here for seven days. Of course not. They don't have that time. They're only in port. But the one thing they mentioned was, it would have been nice if we had tendered facilities. Because one of those guests, had, um, what do you call it, um, a scooter. And they said the tender was rocking up and down. And so we have to accept that the ships, they're big boys. They're, you know, um, uh, they're, they're eventually going to wean out the anchoring ships. Not only the tender operators and, you know, um, all of this can lose um, jobs. Uh, and, uh, and not only that, but think about us. We have homes, we have bills, we have children, we have families, that these same people that is fighting against this, all like today, are they going to give me the money that I would have lost? Mm-hmm. Okay, so, on, we're going to have uh, ask the Premier and the Deputy Premier to respond to your question uh, at this point in time. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that and uh, continue to listen in, uh, gentlemen. Well, I thank the, co- uh, the caller very much. I, I happy to stay silent because she's ma- she's making case, one of yeah. the most powerful <laughs> cases, I think more powerful than, than I either of us could, could possibly <laughs> yeah. do. Um, but uh, to our point about how long this uh, this controversy about whether or not we should build these pairs has gone on, as long as I can remember. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, it always becomes hugely politicized. I, I know that there are some people who have legitimate um, concerns and feel strongly and sincerely uh, about the the environmental impact that such a project will have, mm-hmm. and I, I, those people have ever ever right to feel that way. And I no way no way um, would trivialize their views about that. But I I can tell you that the the opposition are certainly three members of the opposition I know. Um, Mr. Arden McLean, Mr. Anthony Eden, and Mr. Al Saku are in opposition to this project only because they are now in the opposition, because 
they were all members of uh, my government at one point, or government I was a part of at one point. And I know how strongly they, their views, uh, held their views were, that this was something that was absolutely needed. In fact, I will go further and, and say that in certainly in the case of Arden, Arden still knows and believes that we need to build the port. But it is just a very good political uh, platform to to kick off an opposition campaign um, to, to, to try to achieve the government next time round. Um, I've been around this business a long time. Arden and I have had many, many conversations as recently as the last meeting of the House um, about the about these birthings. And I know that um, Arden is uh, insincere in, in anything he says um, publicly that this is a bad idea. Um, he knows that we need the cruise birthings. He believes we need the cruise birthings. The only reason he opposes the cruise birthings is because he's not part of the government. But we, we can't we can't. I, I understand politics. Believe, believe you me, especially about politics. But believe you me, this is just too big, too important, a critical national issue for us to to play with it in in this way. And if people have have strong views, I don't I don't try to to tell people they shouldn't have a view that is different than mine or that different than the government. But to to oppose something purely because on the basis of of where you sit. In, in the legislative assembly, um, when you know that it, or, or you believe it is a critical, critically needed piece of Cayman's infrastructure, is is putting pol your political interests and ambitions above the national interests, and that is just bad representation. Okay, I'll, I'll see if I could add to that. I, sure, I think that the caller really hit on a key point, and that was a trickle down and linkage. Of, of what this tourism product actually does. When she talked about, she picked them up and she drove them into the community and how many different people the spend actually hit yesterday when she was talking about the different shops and the food shops and that type of thing. But go one step further, how many people is that hitting today as that multiplies through our economy? So it, her point that you know, we have to continue to grow this industry. We have to take advantage of it. Um, I appreciate her call, and I think she certainly had some excellent points there. I, w I will finish up by saying um, the Premier spoke about the, the sincereness of the environmentalists. Um, this government's sincere, too, because we stopped the project basically for a year and, and said we understand the concern because we have the same concern about balancing this project. And, and we brought back and looked at how we could do this project with less environmental impact. Um, and we brought, as I've said over and over, the best in class to look at how this could, could be done. And, and we are now in a position with experts who have looked at it. We have shown um, quite a bit of, of savings but there is more to be explained once all of the other reports are put together by the PwC report. So, Ose, if I can just pick up on one point. Sure. Um, I, I have, you know, pretty much stayed out of this um, this debate, um, except at, at sort of the higher level. And, and not that's simply a reflection of my confidence in the stewardship of the project by, by the Deputy Premier. Mm -hmm. um, so... But I, I have thought, believe you me, I have thought about this many, uh, for a long, long time, and from as, as many different perspectives as I possibly could. I tell people all the time, there may be some in this country who love, who love it as much as I do, but nobody loves this country any more than I do. I would not, I would not for one moment support anything that I thought was not in the overall best interest of, of my country, not just during my lifetime, but during the lifetimes of my children and hopefully grandchildren and, and all of the children and, and, and grandchildren of, of, the, of, of the rest of, of my fellow Caymanians as well. There are trade-offs in everything in life. Everything comes at a price. I remember, I'm old enough to remember 
when the late Mr. Berkeley and the late Mr. Warren and Mr. Benson and those proposed the, the, re, the redevelopment of the cargo port, which involved a considerable amount of dredging at the time. I remember that was one of the, the few occasions in my lifetime when there were actually a major protest, where there, were, there was a march, as, as the old people used to call it, against the development mm -hmm. of the port. Can you imagine where we would be now had they not developed the cargo port? And we are, we are, I believe, at that kind of a, of a place with respect to, the, to both the redevelopment of the cargo port, which is proposed, and the construction of these cruise berthing. I hear the opposition, particularly the leader of the opposition, on and on over again, citing the numbers uh, and congratulating um, out of one side of his mouth the deputy premier uh, at the success that, that he and the government have achieved over the course of the past five years in, in building both um, cruise tourism and stayover tourism. Of course, we are happy to take credit for that success. But we are also, in this government, far-sighted enough to understand that just because the numbers are strong now is no guarantee without more that the numbers are going to remain strong and that you have to bear in mind all of the factors which contribute to whether or not cruise tourism continues to, to stay strong or whether it is to decline. I personally have been in, um, around long enough in, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say in government, in the Legislative Assembly, because I wasn't always in government, this is my third government, to have gone through th two cycles when cruise tourism declined significantly. And I remember very well the pain that that caused. What most people don't seem to appreciate, uh, who, who always, uh, those who say, well, Cayman shouldn't concentrate on cruise tourism, what we should concentrate on is the stay over, because they spend more money. Well, aside from the fact that cruise tourism contributes more than $200 million a year to the, to the local economy, there are more Caymanians employed directly or indirectly as a result of cruise tourism than stay over tourism. There are thousands, and I mean thousands of Caymanians. The lady who called a while ago is a prime example who derive a very good living from cruise tourism. We have been told in no uncertain terms, and I have been in the meetings, by those who make the key decisions about the, whether or not the cruise ships will call here and the number that will call here and which ships will call here, i.e. the CEOs of, of the cruise companies, of the key cruise companies. We have been told in no uncertain terms that if we do not have, if we continue to be the only outlier in the region, that is the only cruise destination that doesn't have cruise berthings, over the course of the next few years, we are going to see a fall off in the number of cruise visitors, not because they want to, but because they have taken a decision not to tender the, the Oasis and, and what's the other one called? The mega class. The, 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 the mega, the mega um, cruise ships. And those ships will not stop in Cayman. So it, it's not as though cruise tourism is going to come to a screeching halt. But what we are going to see over time is a significant fall off in the numbers. And believe you me, if you see the numbers fall off by, by two or 300,000 a year, it's going to be a whole different experience for the Caymanians who, and the Caymanian businesses who benefit from cruise tourism. Okay, folks, we're going to take a commercial break. We also have two callers on hold. We're going to ask those callers to hang in there. Quick commercial break. When we return, we will go directly to you.
You remember the sale at Vamped Motors? Yeah, the your sale, your choice. The one where you can get cash back or can put the savings to extend the warranty or upgrade features? Yes, it's still going on. But now you can get $8,000 off a new Ford Ranger truck. $8,000, you know? You for real? Come see for yourself while they still have so much to choose from from now through October. Save big during your sale, your choice at Vamped Motors. With almost every vehicle on sale, you decide whether to get your dream ride at its lowest price. Take cash back at Add years to the warranty or service plan. Choose an add-on or mix your options. Your sale, your choice. Because you know what you need and Vamped Motors will help you drive it home. Vamped Motors on Walker's Road. Sometimes things just don't go as planned. That's why you need contractors all risk insurance from Fidelity Insurance Brokers. Ensure you're covered in the event of property damage and third-party injury or damage claims during your construction projects. And with Fidelity Insurance Brokers, you can be sure you are getting competitive pricing and superior customer service. Call us today for a free quote. Fidelity, we're good for you. A pharmacy is where you go for medicine and for the pharmacist's advice on how to take them. Here at CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy, our pharmacists are trusted health professionals whose job is to help people receive the best results out of their medicine. They know exactly what's in your prescriptions and will be happy to answer any of your questions. You can be sure that our pharmacists will see that your medicine is at the right strength, in the right dose, and will check that you yourself know how to take them or use them properly. Come in today for a consultation with our pharmacist at CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy, where we care about your health. A trip to New York City is the experience of a lifetime. Starting this December, Cayman Airways will be offering daily non-stop flights from Grand Cayman to New York City. That's right. Cayman Airways is going daily to New York City starting this December. Stroll through Central Park or take in the bright lights of Times Square. Enjoy a Broadway show or visit museums, the Empire State Building, and so much more. Whether you're visiting for business or pleasure, you'll fall in love with New York City. And daily non-stop flights from Grand Cayman aboard Cayman Airways starting this December. For details and to book, call Cayman Airways Reservations at 949-2311. Contact a travel agent or visit caymanairways.com. The Department of Children and Family Services would like to invite the community to a series of inspiring events recognizing the contributions of our senior citizens throughout October, the Older Persons Month. This year's theme is Respecting the Wisdom and Value of Older Persons. Key events include educational seminars, a beach walk, a variety show, gala, movie trip, and more across all three islands. For a full listing of events, get your copy of the Older Persons Month calendar at public buildings, dcfs at gov.ky, or contact dcfs at 949-0290. System 1-800-534-8255. What is on your mind when it comes to the government, independence, and the opposition? Issues that matter to you. 1-800-534-8255. Waiting to hear from you. For the record, with your host, Aurit Connor. Welcome back to For the Record in the studio with me this morning, Honorable... Alden McLaughlin, Premier of the Cayman Islands, Honorable Moses Colonel, Deputy Premier, also Minister of Tourism. We're going straight to the phone lines as promised. First caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, caller. Welcome to For the Record. Hello, is it my turn? Yes, it is. Go right ahead, good sir. Good morning, gentlemen. This is number one from the Brock. Morning, number one from morning, the Brock. Morning, sir. Yes, and Alden, this is for you. This is not for Moses now, because you're the head. What you guys need to do, you answered one of the questions I was going to ask you a while ago. What happened about the Port Dock? Wasn't there a big complaint about that? Yes, there was. Uh, didn't you get it done? Yes, we did. Are they complaining now? <laughs> that was a complaint then. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> oh, are yeah, you if they're complaining now? What? About the, no, they're certainly not complaining about it now. When we see how important it, uh, uh, that uh, pair that we have, the first one that was built uh, by Mr. Berkeley Bush, how important that was to the Cayman Islands economy. Listen, what I want to say is this: they make so much of a fuss over thing, and after it's done, you hear not more. That's the Never. truth. 
Efforts don't want it down there. Now, oh, see, I'm talking to Alden. Okay. <laughs> if you don't want it down there, put a small one up here, enlarge the one up the creek, and make a ship coming one in 500 or 1,000 ship coming here. Send something to the brack. Well, I can tell you that your premier is working on that. With, with most, most the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I had enough talking with you. No, but but Moses is right. We 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 are. Uh, um, whether or not we do something in Cayman Brac is not dependent on on whether this one goes ahead or not. We are we are looking to improve this the situation in Cayman Brac so that they can have regular calls of appropriate size uh, cruise vessels too far. Not being rude. That's just a real speech. <laughs> now, the second thing I want to ask you is if, if they don't want nothing down there, just tell them, look, we're going to send them to the brack. Tough luck if you want to see them fly over. Yeah, but I, I, I don't think it's the case that, that they don't want. I, I, they, I think there is a, there is a small, I wouldn't say small, but there, there is, a, um, there is a, a lobby here against the, the cruise port. Um, a, a significant lobby. But I don't think by any means that it is the majority of people. Um, I just don't have that sense at all. Okay, sir. That, OC, give me five minutes because you don't get too much call from the back. All day, the second thing I want to say to you is this, because you're the head of government. Up at Faith Hospital, you need to get some sort of shade on that um, front end door. When people go in, they have to use a wheelchair to get inside, and it's pouring rain. You cannot get out of a car and put in a wheelchair unless you're soaking wet. Please get something done up there because I've been speaking to more about it. Okay, I'll get behind him. <laughs> I, got so, a question, I got a question to ask you. When it comes to laws being made in the Cayman Islands, isn't it the government that decided the laws? Is it, it's the majority of the members of the Legislative Assembly. Yeah, it's not a judge? Not a judge, no. Okay, well, I just hope them two same sex thing carrying thing to court. I hope that judge doesn't make the wrong mistake and lose his job. All right? Don't bring that in the Cayman Islands. Tell them keep it where you want England, America, France, wherever it was. Cause if it wasn't for that mark of the beast, Obama, you wouldn't have had it. And then for the girl, the queen went, did it. That was it. Mm -hmm. Just want to remind you, though, number one, that a judge will determine whether or not any law. Um, meets the constitutional test as well. Yeah. So while the judge may not make the law, if the law has been established, passed, a judge can determine whether or not it is constitutional. Yeah, it's compatible. Yes, yeah. with the constitution. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the, uh, we have still have two more callers. Next caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, good morning, sir. How are good you? Morning. Not bad, not bad. Um, gentlemen, I personally don't have <clears throat> and and excuse me, with the cruise brought in um port. But I think where a lot of the people in this country are seriously frustrated is because of the unemployment that is in, in, in this country right now because I drive around every day, pretty much every into the island and the amount of construction that is going on. And I don't see any Caymanians, a lot of paper Caymanians, don't take this personally or offensive in any way, please, right? But I'm talking about Caymanians. We have a right in this country. We have a right to work. We have a right to live. And we have a right to be law-abiding. And the way I'm looking at this is that what are the, if this dock is being built, how much Caymanians, how much this, 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 this indigenous Caymanians will be on this job that I can, even if I'm not working and I can drive by it and say, oh, I see 10 Caymanians and I see 100 um, paper Caymanians. Gentlemen, that, that is what I am seeing and that is what I'm, I'm getting from um, this whole thing. I think if something was done about the unemployment in this country, I don't think the people would be as frustrated as they are right now because they don't know if this thing goes through. Are they going to be involved in it? Or, or they, don't, they don't know from one day to another. And I just want to thank you very much, Mr. McLaughlin, for coming and enlighten the people of what is happening in this country. I just wish, you know, you would do it a little bit more, you know, just to help us, you know, get, a, get through day to day of what is happening in this island. And we don't have to be speculating all the time. 
And I think that would be good for yourself and good for the country. And I, I think the issues wouldn't be is, 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 is the way they are right now in this country. We would just more, if a little bit of more transparency would, would happen and just, just enlighten us. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for listening to my... Thank you very okay. much, caller. We're going to take uh, one more call. Can, let me, can uh, I answer sh- that? Sure, sure. Yeah. Minister, um, I think he brings up a very important point. And just what I wanted to say was that one of the, the stipulations that we have is that the Port Authority of the Cayman Islands will continue to operate the new cargo port and the new cruise berthing facility. And if he, he looks at what takes place there on a daily basis, 96% of the employees at the Port Authority are Caymanian, and more Caymanian people work in that part of the tourism industry, as has been said before this morning, that if he takes a drive down there and looks around, he's going to see every taxi operator is a Caymanian, all the tour operators are owned by Caymanians, and he's going to see them walking and working every day. Thank you very much for that, Minister. I think we're going to squeeze one more call in before we go to the break, Miss Susan, and then we'll have one after. Next caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Hello, good morning, Mr. Connor. Good morning, sir. Good morning, uh, Honorable Premier and Honorable Deputy Premier. Good, good morning, morning, sir. Um, I, I, I've been listening for a while, so I've got just a few points I want to make, see before you jump to your break. Sure. And I want to, um, I, obviously, I need to bring the Premier of our country up to speed on what really going on in this country. He made a few comments that are, that are inaccurate. Um, one is that he don't feel that it's the consensus of the majority of the people, on, and it's not a push against the port. It's a push to have a constitutional referendum required by the Constitution if the people of the country see the need of a matter of national importance to enact a petition to engage in a referendum. In fact, there was a, that is the current situation, Mr. Premier. Well, that, that's what, I, uh, I that's what you all are saying, but, but that is not. You know full well that it is a campaign against the port. That's what it is. It's dressed up under the guise that you want a referendum, but that's not the case at all. And be respectful at that time. And I just want to remind the general public of certain facts that surround this particular issue that you claim you've been around long enough to observe. Number one, number one, the $200 million that you say cruise passengers provide to our, our, our local economy, there's another $600 million that is made off of say over you. You, you forgot to mention that. Secondly, I agree 100%. No, the, the thing that... that, that, that speak, please? No, but, but, you, but, you, no, but you, you're saying that, I, that I've said things that are, are not the case. I am not suggesting that stay-over tourism is not, is not important. I'm saying that cruise tourism is a critical, important part of the overall tourism business. That's all. $200 million, quote-unquote, comes from the cruise industry. You said that, sir. I heard it come out. Yes, 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 yes but I'm saying... Fair. So six plus two is eight. So we'd rather have eight than just six. I just want to say what I got to say. You can mitigate it after because you have the you have the mic. I don't. You know. I just want to call in and say what I got to say. I just want to say this. You make these claims, and we take them. We take them on. We take them on board. You make also false claims or or un, uninformed claims that is, you don't feel that it's the consensus of the people. Again, when the numbers come in, you'll be you'll be shockingly surprised um, on what on what the consensus of the people is. That that I can tell you personally, being involved personally. Number two, I want to explain something to you is that at the meeting on the 26th of September, which you weren't on island to attend, and um, the cruise lines made it very, very, very clear that the Cayman Islands cruise market is not at any risk. They made it very clear that they have identified a certain class of, of potential passengers, which is the higher spent passengers, which their mega ships would be accommodating. That, in, that is the, 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 the deputy premier is, uh, is 100% spot on with that. That is a market that, yes, would be out there. However, 60%, 60%, now I want to pay close attention, 60% of their global revenue globally comes from the Caribbean, built on the backs of the very same people that, that, that the ministry wants us to believe that they're moving away from to cater to a different group of people. And what I got from that meeting also was is that there was an increase in numbers, Mr. Premier. They wanted to maintain numbers. Those are the facts. Now, I get it. I know, I know that the Honorable Deputy Premier has never set one foot in Hawksty Bay in his life. He never snorkeled or goggled out there. I'm sure of it. And, that's, and, that's, and environmental is one whole thing. I just want to say this quickly. Very Number good, one. Very quick, the, the last time, the last time that, that, that your government had the mandate of the people, you've been, you were the Minister of, of Education, and you said it wouldn't be an act of God that would stop you from building the schools. Thank God. Thank God. 
that God didn't come down and do that. However, to you've been premier now two terms since, and you telling me that you're going to get behind building a port as opposed to finishing the very schools that you thought the Cayman Islands needed ten and a half years ago, and you have not even considered as premier of this country for two terms to focus any of that energy and mandate that you claim well, you have. Well, I, I hate to interrupt you, but uh, you obviously have been so focused on this that you have not paid attention to the government's plan for the continued development of the John Gray School and the construction of two more. So, you see, my, my problem with, with you claiming to state facts is that they are generally not facts. They are your perspective on a particular issue. Mm-hmm. Caller, I'm going to ask you to leave us there. We have to take a commercial break. We still have one more caller on hold as well. Please stay tuned, folks. For the record, we'll be back shortly. At Seaboard Marine, customers often ask us questions about their shipments. Hi, I'm thinking of buying a car from the States. Which port do you ship out of? Hi, we ship out of Miami, Houston, and Brooklyn. Just let us know your port of choice and we can provide you with a quotation and answer any questions you may have on insuring and protecting your vehicle during its journey. Shipping shore to shore, sea. Not all insurance is created equal, but who has the time to shop around? Take the guesswork out of your insurance coverage with Fidelity Insurance Brokers. Let us match you with the best coverage to suit your needs at a price to suit your wallet. Plus, get superior customer service from dedicated claims professionals to ensure speedy claims processing. Get your insurance through Fidelity Insurance Brokers. Call us today at 949-7822 for a free quote. Fidelity, we're good for you. Cruise tourism is a vital part of Cayman's economy. It is the government's responsibility to create an environment where our people can have an opportunity to grow and prosper today, tomorrow, and into the future. It is a myth that Cayman does not need cruise tourism. It is a fact that cruise passengers spend $200 million per year buying services from small businesses, tour operators, attractions, restaurants, and retail shops. Those funds stay right here, supporting our economy and communities. Support the pairs. Support our tourism. We are now in the hurricane season, and to survive a hurricane, you need to be informed. If you have been informed by official sources that a hurricane is approaching the Cayman Islands, and you live in a low-lying area that is prone to flooding or near the beaches, which may be swept by high tides or storm waves, please seek a safe place and high ground. If the only way for you to get to a safe place is a road that is also likely to be flooded, during a storm, please leave home early. Don't run the risk of being stranded. This has been a public service announcement from your community station, Radio Cayman. Initiating system for information that matter. For the record, with Orrit Connor continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. I want to remind our listeners uh, our WhatsApp number, 925-3261. So in the event that we're unable to accommodate you live, you can certainly send us a text message or leave us a voice note, preferably a voice note, because the voice note, then we can play that over the air during the course of the show as well. Of course, if you send a text message, we will read the contents of that as well. Let's go to the phone lines. Carla, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Yes, good morning, uh, gentlemen. Good morning. Um, I rarely call this show, but um, I was um, told to take a listen this morning. So I just want to ask a question and then give a statement. Um, The question I'm asking is, why is it that our Premier and Deputy Premier do not show show up on other talk shows, but my problem with that is that they're being selective and they're ostracizing an entire sector of the community, and um, I'd just like to say to them, during the election season, you're on all the talk shows, so what's the problem now with being on all of them? Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm not sure what all of them are. Um, I, I come to the show and I come to talk today on occasion. I I have not, um, over the course of of the last uh, few years, spent a great deal of time on on the talk shows. I I roll up my sleeves and and work um, very hard almost every single day um, doing the country's business. And I I come on the talk shows when I I think um, it is important that I do. 
there is a certain talk show, the Rooster Show, that I do not go um, to um, because the the host of the show is downright disrespectful and vehemently opposed to me personally and to the government, and I am not going to spend my time engaged in confrontation um, based not on one's view about things, but because of someone's personal objection to me. So if if he behaved in a professional way, I would be happy to go on, on his show. I, I don't expect the host of these shows to to um to cater to the government or to or 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 to suck up to me. But I, I will not um I will not countenance um disrespect and and outright lies. And I'm not so, and so that's why I don't go on a rooster show. Um I will more than happy to go on any other show. Okay. Um we have one caller but before we go to that caller, um wanna uh ask the deputy premier. We we have heard uh, one caller referred to uh, the meeting that was held at the Family Life Center and what the cr- um, cruise operators have said. Um, whether or not people put their own spin to it, whether or not they hear what they want to hear, uh, it is important in this dialogue about the port that factual, truthful information is put out there rather than pe- people uh, taking a political spin and putting it on it. Because if they want people to be informed, if they want people to be involved in a genuine way, then they need to ensure that the, the facts are given uh, to them. Right. Now, thank you very much for the, the question. I, I want to make it very clear that, that we planned that meeting and we made a commitment to the country that we would have the meeting, we would bring the experts that were making the decisions, and we would stay at that meeting as long as it took to answer every question from any person that came to the meeting. I will say that about 9.45, the 600 people plus started to thin out quite a bit. Um, I was extremely pleased with the ones that had been there because from where I was sitting looking down, I could see them taking notes. I could see them engaged. I could see them wanting to get information. We had assembled uh, a team there. The port director was there um, to answer questions, which he did. The major project office, um, Max Jones, Mr. Peter Ranger were there. They are now in charge of the procurement of this process. There's no elected official that sits in a procurement committee. Um, they're the ones that are running with this now and, and gathering the information. Um, we had two VPs, one from Carnival and one from Royal Caribbean, who came to answer questions because there had been these questions about, is the government really sure that the cruise lines will only tender these larger vessels? Well, the point was made by Royal Caribbean that they have stopped sending their Oasis-class vessels. They never came to Cayman. They don't intend to send them there, and that is a percentage of their business that we are losing. Straight talk, examples happening every week. Um, The Carnival VP said the same thing, that the new ships that they have coming online, the large ships, over 5,000 people, um, will run the Western Caribbean route. Um, It's a market that they want. But those large vessels will replace some of the smaller vessels that are now calling this route. So they tried to make it very clear that this is a decision that they want to continue to call on Cayman. Premier and myself have been involved with the highest ranking from the chairman on down of these lines. And they have said they appreciate the Cayman Islands. They appreciate Grand Cayman as a destination. They want to continue to stop here. But they cannot continue without cruise berthing because there's just too much, too many passengers to tender back and forth. So they have to make a decision. When all of these ships come online and they start looking for the route in the Western Caribbean, are they going to invest in Cayman, which they have offered to do, they're now investing in Montego Bay. They've invested in Falmouth. They're invested in Ocho Rios. They are lobbied, I would say, on a daily basis to invest in Cuba, which is in the sailing area, this you know, eight-hour um, transport at, at the evening hours to get them to a port in the morning. So they have options. 
the option that they want to capitalize on, the option they want to continue, is Georgetown Grand Cayman. But if it's not available to them, they're going to have to find someplace else to send these large vessels, which means they will invest someplace else. Will that be Honduras? Will it be Mexico? Will it be Cuba? That's what we are in the middle of now. Um, as has been said earlier, this has been talked about and talked about and talked about. Now it's critical. We know, we've been told, we see what's happening around us, that we can't take a chance on losing 20 or 30 percent of our cruise business. I don't know how you go to the port and tell a tour operator that they're only going to need 65 percent of their tour bus in two years. So, so this is the responsibility of a prudent government is to look at opportunity to continue to create revenue streams for the country. This is a revenue stream that we have an opportunity to continue to build. That's what we're doing. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Minister. We do have one caller on hold. We have to go to our headline news. Two callers on hold. Very quickly for our headline news. Hang in there. We will take your call as soon as we return. Please stay tuned. The portfolio of the civil service continues to host several courses and workshops designed to help government managers develop, quote, exceptional leadership skills. Two more courses are scheduled before the end of the year, and the Cayman Islands Government Leadership and Professional Development Conference has now been slated for November at the Marriott. A Madrid court has let off a former doctor over stealing newborn babies from their mothers and supplying them to infertile couples. The court found gynecologist Eduardo Vela had committed the crimes but could not legally be convicted because too much time had elapsed. He was the first person to go to trial for illegal adoptions that took place during and after the fascist dictatorship of General Franco. Thousands more cases are suspected. And a far-right candidate, Jair Bolsonaro, has won the first round of Brazil's presidential elections. He will face the left-wing Workers' Party candidate, Fernando Haddad, in the second round on October 28th after he failed to win the 50 percent of valid votes needed to win outright. With almost all the votes counted, Mr. Bolsonaro has 46 percent and Mr. Haddad 29 percent. Opinion polls conducted before the election predicted that in a second round, the two candidates would be tied. Those are your headlines. I'm Carsley Fuller. Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands. What's happening in your community? News and information, music and more. You can find us. www.radiocayman.gov.ky Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Radio Cayman is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. Initiating system for information that matter for the record with Orit Connor continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record in the studio with me this morning, Premier of the Cayman Islands, Honorable Alden McLaughlin, Deputy Premier, Honorable Moses Cornell, going straight to the phone lines as promised. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Thanks for being so patient. Hello, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, um, Premier. Morning, um, Deputy Premier. Morning, sir. Good morning, Alden. This is Alden Fabian, Rambo. Hey, good morning. How are you? <laughs> you just about, you know, you go. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Alden, like, how I see this, this political context, right? Like, like, like I told you early on in this political experience, yeah, is our persuasion with opposition. You understand? And then I get personal into it. Hello? Yeah, yes, sir, we're we listening. We're listening. It's, it's on, yeah, in. The war period to move in a bit in um, geostrategic a bit, right? It's a, it, 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 it binding because I don't hear no bias from most, right? When it's too late mm-hmm. and stuff, right? In my younger years, right, I see Kamana Bay 12 years ago, right? I, I worked at construction, right? And the people against it. And people go there now, enjoy it. Henceforth, now the, um, the highway up Bradstreet Road, people against it. And now we have all of it. The commute is fast, you know. So, and, and the whole point of it, actually, right now, when I vote, sorry, Ms. Darlene, I vote in protest that I vote now. Right? And that my vote alignment. And we came out now, we got to think about the future and present. Talk right around with, 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 with simple things. I feel the poor person, you understand? <laughs> and without what I come to be, and I know flourishing down the line, you know? And people have a tendency to came out now. I could up roaring this and that. 
in the kit market, so they realise it. The difference is though. Let me examine your point now. The risk all done now. Although, people against it, and you had the major bankers up there. Right? Despite they are into the life of the port still. Mr. Lynn, I watch it for the question. Mm-hmm. You, you, um, you, you gonna run one more time, or? You gonna run again, or? Sorry? Are you gonna run again? You gonna run again, or that's it? <laughs> Well, I can't be premier again um, n- next term. Whether whether or not I, I run again um, remains to be seen. Um, we'll see. Okay, we'll thank see. you. Thank but you. But I, I I really um, I really am not focusing on my <clears throat> on my reelection at all. Um, more so than ever before, I am concentrating on trying to get done the things that I and my government were elected to do uh, to deliver the best quality of life for the people of these islands and that's what that's what this is all about because uh, unfortunately many of those the, the mouth champions of this um, opposition to the to the cruise port don't live um, that life don't have to struggle to raise their, their children and their families based on a living from the cruise industry and and that's where the rubber really re- meets the road when you are ensconced in your nice little office, um, getting on with your work and, 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 and getting paid for it, not having to, to care whether or not um, the, the cruise ships have called today because the weather is bad, you don't have the same perspective as that lady who called and said, today I won't make any money because there's no, there are no cruise ships in port. It is Caymanians' jobs and lives that are on the line. And the short-sighted approach being taken by the opposition to this, that because cruise is good, cruise numbers are good today, we can always expect that that's going to be the case, is irresponsible, short-sighted. And if they succeed, if they prevail, you can believe, I won't be in this office for sure, but the cruise passenger numbers are going to decline significantly. And there is going to be major hurting of the people who rely on this industry for their bread. Mm-hmm. We want to thank that caller. Let's go to the next caller. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Um, I, I like to hear about the port, right? Hear what you what the future is. But it's something I got to ask you, you know, Mr. Arden. I asked you already. Uh, was your, was the decision, or was, was your thinking about the decriminalization of the cannabis? And you asked me already, and I answered you already. Yeah, I am. I yeah. am not going to support that. You can like me, love me, hate me. I am not going to support that. No, because you see, I was just asking because the money just. I mean, you said, had this talk many times before. You, my position not change. So I got to ask you again. <laughs> <laughs> make sure so, you're hearing it right, huh? Yeah, yeah. Make sure you hear me correctly. I'm old fashioned like that. Sorry. No, you're not old fashioned, you're just stubborn, man. <laughs> <laughs> Why I gotta ask you, right, is that you proclaiming that all these jobs and we got you know, stick to the cruising that you propose and we gonna have but you know how much jobs the cannabis industry has? It has fifty thousand different products. Okay. Eat up. A simple little job makes thirty five thousand a year in this in this industry. You 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 would deny us that just because you don't like to see people or you like to stick to your you know, your um your donors. Maybe we should have a referendum on that too. Yeah, I would say I was gonna say that, yeah. That may be one for a referendum. Anyway, Colin, we want to thank you very much, um, uh, you know, for that as well. Uh we've uh, encouraged our <laughs> Listeners to send in uh, WhatsApp messages as well. So I 
um, it is incumbent upon me to read those messages. Also says, good morning, Mr. Connor, Mr. Premier, and Mr. Deputy Premier. As I listen to the Premier speak, I am very positive he wants the best for Cayman. Uh, this is his country. Why hurt us? Mr. McLaughlin has come a long way. Some hiccups along the way, but he has done well. What he mentioned about certain persons of the opposition wanting to use this as a political hammer next election, I believe him. I am for the port going forward. Uh, he also says, it's very true, Mr. Premier. All the fat cats on the opposition are not uh, struggling uh, with money or children going to school. I have watched and witnessed what some politicians do. After, after elections, they cannot be trusted. So that's the view of one of our listeners uh, from our WhatsApp message um, as well. I'm going to throw the mic back over to you two gentlemen. Well, <laughs> most, most you go now. <laughs> well, I, I want to thank him for, the, for that WhatsApp. Um, the, the points that we tried to make this morning and we're trying to lay out is when you look at the infrastructure and the demands that a country has and, and the process that you have of accomplishing this, if I talk about the, the revenue streams that come from tourism itself, when we first um, looked at the demands that we had, one was the airport. And, and we took a lot of criticism for the airport because we didn't have jet bridges. We didn't have some other things that were going to go along with it. But I believe now that the country understands that we had to start as quickly as we could. We couldn't stop with the infrastructure, and we had to, to build it out of cash and devise a way of how we could do that. The plan itself calls for, in the future, jet bridges. It calls for taxiways. It calls for lengthening of the airstrip. But what it has done, it has shown the global community that Cayman is serious about its infrastructure and that in a short period of time, this first step will be completed. I believe that as we look at, at conversation this morning about the cruise berthing facility, the process that the government chose was to look at the best in class to give advice of this is an opportunity. We, we put an RFP out and we hired a globally recognized company in PwC, PricewaterhouseCoopers, and they are doing the study that says whether this makes economic sense or does not and how it's supported. Mm -hmm. And this is a five-year process that we are now into. It, it is clear from the last report that we got that we need to pursue this as we go forward as quickly as possible. But what seems to be lost is that there's more information that is going to come out of this PwC report. Mm -hmm. The report has the demand on it that it's going to give you a final written business case opinion when all of the information is in. So a design build, we don't know what the exact cost will be at the end of the bid and the preferred bidder award. But what we do know is that the design bill finance will have a mechanism and a method to pay for that in the proposal of the final bid. And then that will be captured by, again, a globally recognized um, group, and it'll be laid out with the recommendation and the information that will then go to the elected government, to cabinet, to make the final decision of how it goes forward. So I think the more we can get this information out, you know, I, I hear a lot of things, um, good and bad, every day about there's information that's needed. I agree there's information that's needed, but there's no way to gather that information if you don't work to get okay. the information, and that's the process that we're in right now. Okay. Uh, we have uh, two or three more callers. We're going to take one caller. We have to go to a commercial break afterwards. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, caller. Welcome to For the Record. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Doc. Yeah, good morning, uh, Mr. Premier and Mr. Deputy Premier. Morning, Doc. Morning, Doc. How are you? Good, good. I know i got to be on, the, on my best this morning, so I don't ant antagonize anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not, not that it really makes any difference in my life anyway. Well, know, I, 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 I'm immune to antagonism now, so it's all right. Well, I'm not immune to it because <laughs> I don't have the shields that you do have. <laughs> 
You know, I don't, I don't have the economic and political power, so I actually do feel the, the, the reaction, you know, and that happens in this country. But, you know, my concerns have always been with regards to people's abilities to be able to express themselves and to not be sort of left out or, or victimized as a result of it. I think that debate really is something that is useful to society in the final analysis, regardless of what the sense the debate might make to certain people at certain times. Because obviously, if, I, if I've made a, a particular kind of process in terms of my thinking and come to a conclusion, I'm going to be sort of less uh, patient with people who feel that they have the same right to make that process as well. So when they begin to speak, I begin to devalue their thoughts and their expressions and actually sometimes can even become a little bit dismissive about it. I think that's almost human nature. In the position in government, though, we have to be a little bit much more aware of, of, of that human condition to devaluate people's opinions. I have heard some very good opinions with regards to why we should not build a port at this particular time. And uh, I have paid attention to, re to people that are talking about building the port. Unfortunately, when I listen to the voice and the logic of people that are crying out to build the port that are supporting the, the government, just, their, just the way they sound and their rationality makes me suspicious of their intent and their understanding. When I listen to those people that are against the port, it makes a hell of a lot more sense to me the way they express themselves, they're clear, and they seem to know what it is that they want. But let us not just let everything have to do with how well somebody can argue or put forward a position. Let us, let us, let us look at the deeper type of challenges that the country might have and what the country should pay attention to solving. We seem to always be building an inroad into the Cayman Islands for persons outside because that represents money and power. But if we're weak on the inside and we don't have the capital on the inside and we're just given to making roads for people to come in, not for us to go out, then the people from outside are going to totally dominate and eventually el eliminate all the values and all of the kinds of dreams that we dreamt in this island and that we have buried in the graves of our ancestors. Ancestor uh, is, is important. Our past, our tradition, our heritage cannot be something that but, we just but doc, doc, I don't dis doc, I don't disagree with any of that, but I just don't see the relevance of that to the, to the port project. Uh, the, I mean, this is a, a project aimed at continuing employment for, for Caymanians in an industry that is principally principally peopled by Caymanians. Uh, about 80-something 80, 80 percent of the people involved in, in anything arising from the cruise industry are Caymanians. So I, I'm, I'm not following uh, your argument in, in that regard. Doc, if you, could, if you could wrap up very quickly for us, please. Create a framework for an understanding that is not just based upon this sort of rational type of so-called approach to economic and economic growth because you are forgetting many factors. You're forgetting about how people feel. You're forgetting about what people value. You're trying to tell us that all that matters are numbers and that, that, that dollars and cents is the only thing. No, that Doc, what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is that, that people's ability to, to feed themselves and, and raise their families is what's important or most important to every Caymanian. Well, like I said, I have to be very careful because I think that we say actually all of two different kinds of fields. And uh, yeah, but but I think that you will realize one day at least in your life that there's not just one field; there are other fields as well. And this field of consciousness that I'm speaking from is one that values more than buildings, one that values more than than, than dollars and cents. It values people's consciousness. It values people's opinions. It values people's spirit. It values people's heritage. It values the fact that people in this country are in, unemployed. It values the fact that people feel that there's other people have come in and taken over our country completely, and all we are doing is is is, is powtailing to people who have money and who have wealth, and that's the only thing that is matters in this country. I was born and raised.
embraced at a time when there was more to life than money. What was to life was relationships between people, and we have become so phony about this whole thing that many of us try to believe, try to make other people, especially young people, believe that how we feel about one another is not important. And Doc, I'm going to ask you to leave us there. I'm, I'm going to ask you to leave us there, Doc. We have to take a commercial break. We still have three callers. What I'm going to ask callers to do, please be as brief as possible. The soliloquies, we appreciate them. The information that we get from those soliloquies, we appreciate them. But it is a talk show that is limited to two hours only. Please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back shortly. You remember the sale at Vant Motors? Yeah, the your sale, your choice. The one where you can get cash back or can put the savings to extend the warranty or upgrade features. Yes, it's still going on. But now you can get $8,000 off a new Ford Ranger truck. $8,000, you know? You for real? Come see for yourself while they still have so much to choose from from now through October. Save big during your sale, your choice at Vant Motors. With almost every vehicle on sale, you decide whether to get your dream ride at its lowest price. Take cash back at Add years to the warranty or service plan. Choose an add-on or mix your options. Your sale, your choice. Because you know what you need and Vant Motors will help you drive it home. Vant Motors on Walker's Road. Are you feeling sick but don't feel ill enough to go to the doctor? Ask your pharmacist for advice. Here at West Bay Pharmacy, our pharmacists have been trained to offer helpful, easy-to-understand advice on the treatment of everyday minor ailments for yourself and all the family. Anything from headaches, cough, and sore throat to cold sores, our pharmacists will know when medical help is needed and will not hesitate to refer you to your doctor if your symptoms demand it. Like doctors, our pharmacists have a professional code, which means all personal information you give them will be treated in the strictest confidence. Visit us today at West Bay Pharmacy, where we care about your health. At Seaboard Marine, customers often ask us questions about their shipments. Can you explain what a left and container load is for shipment and what your minimum charge is? Sure. A less than container load or LCL is any overseas shipment that does not require the full space of a container. At Seaboard, we have great rates for small packages. Just let us know the dimensions of your package and we'll help you out from there. Shipping short to short. A trip to New York City is the experience of a lifetime. Starting this December, Cayman Airways will be offering daily nonstop flights from Grand Cayman to New York City. That's right. Cayman Airways is going daily to New York City starting this December. Stroll through Central Park or take in the bright lights of Times Square. Enjoy a Broadway show or visit museums, the Empire State Building, and so much more. Whether you're visiting for business or pleasure, you'll fall in love with New York City. And daily nonstop flights from Grand Cayman aboard Cayman Airways starting this December. For details and to book, call Cayman Airways Reservations at 949-2311. Contact a travel agent or visit caymanairways.com. Cruise tourism is a vital part of Cayman's economy. It is the government's responsibility to create an environment where our people can have an opportunity to grow and prosper today, tomorrow, and into the future. It is a myth that Cayman does not need cruise tourism. It is a fact that cruise passengers spend $200 million per year buying services from small businesses, tour operators, attractions, restaurants, and retail shops. Those funds stay right here, supporting our economy and communities. Support the pairs. Support our tourism. Initiating system. For information that matter, for the record, with Orit Connor, continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record in the studio with me, Honorable Alden McLaughlin, Premier of the Cayman Islands, Honorable Moses Kukerno, Deputy Premier of the Cayman Islands. We have a few callers. I just want to say, uh, I think there's a, a, a powerful saying, brevity is the soul of wit. Uh, um, I believe it may have been part of uh, Shakespeare. I believe uh, the Greek um, uh, Polonius may have said something in that regard as well. So we're just... We're going to use the term here on For the Record this morning as brevity being the soul of wit as well, uh, the soul of the show, soul of For the Record, because we're going to ask our callers to be as brief as possible. We're running out of time, but we want to give all of you an opportunity to at least have some say. Next caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning. Good, good morning. Morning. Good morning. How are you all doing today? Fine, sir. How are you? Good, good. Excellent. I'm going to try to make it a short and sweet because I could go on for days on why we need to dock. Today, 
my wife and I don't have any work. Um, I've known that the weather was going to be bad, so I know the south side would have been the worst place to build a dock, as anybody can see. And, and obviously just the history of it. The capital of Cayman years ago was Baden Town, and they changed to Georgetown because it had better weather. It was deeper. When we talk about silt and sediment, silt and sediment is in the water. It's in the water right now, which is what they're talking about when a ship has to use the bow of stern thrusters to come off. Well, let me point out something today if you're all looking out at the ocean. Isn't that silt and sediment being mixed up by the storm? How long is that storm going to be lasting? Is that going to be more than five to eight minutes? Do anybody understand that within the next couple of days, that water will settle down all the silt and sediment and nothing will happen to the coral? We talk about the sandy beach on West Bay, Seven Mile Beach, and that that sand is going on a conveyor belt going all the way into Georgetown. I don't agree with that. The proof that I have, or in my theory, is when you look at Lobster Pot and you go down to their beach, you'll notice that that sand there is not pink. It's orange. As you're further going all along back into Hogside Bay, you'll notice that the color of the sand doesn't have that beautiful pink color. I don't believe that we're going to disturb that sandy beach on Seven Mile Beach because it's not coming into Georgetown. We're not having that conveyor belt thing that's going through Georgetown in the harbor in itself. I really believe that there's nothing that's going to happen. In fact, I think what's going to happen from Billing to Piers is that we're going to repair that reef, that drop-off from where they had that video with Zena going from Paradise Bar and Grill all the way back to Pageant Beach mm-hmm. to the north. Carl, Carl I'm going to ask you to, uh, to, to stay away from the, de- de- the, the details and uh, uh, get to your point, please. My point is that, you know, we didn't have no work today, and every time that we have bad weather, we have no work. We know that the cruise ships are going to downsize. I went to the FCCA meeting in Cajamel, and they told me from 2000. So I, I would like to tell people that we definitely need to build those piers and not to be worried about the environment. That's the only reason that they have that's the reason why we shouldn't build the piers. Okay. The money that's being made, $200 million a year, is just almost on par to what the stayover visitors are doing. Okay. Thank you very much, caller, for that. Let's go to the next caller. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Morning, gentlemen. It's Johan Mark. Uh, morning, I'll be really sir. Really brief, and mm-hmm. I'll shoot three questions at the panel. Um, Mr. Mayor, welcome back, sir. We're now Thank you. We're, we're now into Q4 2018. Um, can you please provide a synopsis, or if you aren't able to do so in this forum, a written statement as to where we are with regard to the um, proposed actions that I fully support that you recommended where we challenge the UK in conjunction with the other British dependent territories um, and their actions, which effectively are trying to shut down the financial services industry. Also, um, could you add to that the sort of status update as to where we are with EU blacklist? We're going into Q4. Clients are nervous and trying to pay attention and understand and importantly service providers as well. That's the first question. The second question is, Gentlemen, like you, we all want, I want the same thing for Cayman. The question that I'm asking with regard to the tour operators, taxis, water sports operators, so on and so forth, really and truly are getting a rough deal from the cruise line who hold hostage most the qu- the of question, the question, The question, the question, the question, please. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, so you just let David go on. I'm going to ask, is the government prepared to negotiate or help the Caymanian tour taxi operators negotiate a better deal if that is the justification or part thereof in securing um, um, a a better standard of living and earning as a result of the fact that you now have the cruise line at the negotiating table. That's question two. And question three, is there a number in the minds of the leadership of this country, the premier and the deputy premier, where this entire project becomes too much? If the range is between 200 and 400, how will they deal with Czech, Verdant Isles, and the French bid and saying, well, that's more than we were prepared to pay, and how is the country going to pay for it? Thank you Thanks very much, very caller. Much, Have a great day. Thank you very much. Got those questions? Uh, yep. Go ahead, uh, uh, um, Premier. If I could go first, I, I would like to outline what I have previously said. How is this going to be paid for by the country? And and earlier I said, you know, PwC has been hired and, and charged with the responsibility of doing a proper business case on this. They have gathered 
as much information as they could to the point of procurement. Mm -hmm. It was turned over to the procurement office, and now procurement is sending out a, a model that is design, finance, maintain, and build. I think that answers Johan's question. I thank him for the question because they're going to come back with options of how can this be done. And obviously there will be a recommendation by a globally um, recognized expert for cabinet to make a decision on. Um, so I think we're, we have done what we needed to do to get the information to make an informed decision, and not only that, but having the best experts that we could find give us all the information so we can make the proper decision. I think that's the prudent way to approach this. The second question he asked um, about the the way that the, the pricing goes for tour operators and taxis, um, the one thing that I can say that the government has done from years ago, this, this administration can't take credit for it, but the co-op is a very successful arm of tourism and what they do with the North Sound operators and, and the tours that run out of there. They do an excellent job. But the point was also made that this burden, um, government is, is committed to working with them to try to find um, the, the best way forward. But it's also getting everybody to the table at the same time, because what was brought out at the meeting um, earlier this month was that when you make a decision and you put a price structure in place, all of a sudden everybody doesn't agree to that, and this is a, a free market economy. So if somebody comes and decides they want to charge less, then that affects everybody. But certainly it's a work in progress, and, and this government is happy to work toward that and open dialogue. Okay, Mr. Premier, the question I pose for you, uh, Mr. Moxham. Yeah, well, uh, there, are no, there are, I think, probably three, three issues. Um, Perhaps he missed it, but there was a there was a briefing by the by the Minister for Financial Services um, last Tuesday, while I was still away, um, with the industry about where where we are in, in the process, the EU um, blacklisting mm -hmm. process. Uh, so industry has been briefed about that. He he was saying that clients were nervous. Um, and so forth, but I'm not sure whether he was there or not. But the financial services industry um, were given a, a full briefing by the by the minister, uh, who had just returned from from Monaco, but before that she had been in Brussels. So, I think we are in in as good a place as we can possibly be, um, given the uncertainties uh, and and the way they they play this game in in the um, in, in the European Union. On, the, on that particular issue, I am certainly a lot less nervous this time this year than I was this time last year. The, the, um, the, the process is supposed to conclude, I believe, in February of next year. They pushed it back. It was initially supposed to be December, but they pushed it back to, to February. But there are various things that have to be done and are being done um, by us here in the run-up to that, um, including some changes to legislation and, and, and so forth, which will be coming to the House in November. Okay. Um, the, the other thing he was asking about, I think, was the, the public register issue and um, the UK's um, decision, the, the, the UK Parliament's decision to impose, the, you know, requiring the government to impose public registers. There really has been little movement on that. Uh, the position which we have said time and time again, if they if they seek to do that, we will challenge that that decision. It's not a decision we can challenge on. Well, until there is a decision, there is not no decision that we can yes. we can challenge. We've made we've made very clear what we what we intend to do. The the other bit which is um, was more recent, which was this this statement by um, I, I I believe his name was is Donald Toon. The, one of the deputies in, in within the NCA that was um, published on BBC News, complaining that the Cayman Islands was not being um, cooperative mm -hmm. with the NCA, uh, which which caused me to to respond um, to it. I can say that over the course of the last few weeks, I have been in in dialogue with. 
at the political level with the Minister for the Overseas Territories, Lord Ahmad. And we have, I think, um, resolved the concerns which, which we had here about privacy and about the security of the transmission of the data. These were technical issues that, that were, were creating this concern. And I am hopeful that um, very shortly, that Lord Ahmad and myself will be able to issue a joint statement saying that that the concerns which we had and the concerns which they they had have been resolved so, satisfac satisfactorily and that we can resume um the the exchange of information in the in the way that um in, in a way that is satisfactory both to us and to to the um NCA and it's not just the NCA other law enforcement agencies in the UK as well and for anyone who thinks that we were just, because uh, they seem to think so over there for a while, that we were just being um, bloody-minded about this, we we have sought and always sought the best legal advice we, we possibly can on these issues. And uh, at the end of the day, and I made this very, very clear to them over and over again, I am never going to agree to something which I believe will undermine confidence in our in our in our system our financial services industry it is our clients here that make this place successful and our clients and our client base have to to, to to have confidence that when they do business in Cayman when they set up their structures in Cayman that the government is going to respect the integrity and the confidentiality of, of their business, and that information with respect to beneficial ownership is only going to be given where it is appropriate and where it is necessary for law enforcement purposes, and that it is going to be treated respectfully, and that the privacy concerns that which we have, um, and which they, they understandably have, are going to be um, pr properly addressed. So that that's where we are, and as I say, I hope we'll be able to make a a, a statement, Lord Ahmad and myself, sometime during the course of this week Mr. about that. Mr. Minister Kukarna, you mentioned about the uh, design, build, finance. Uh, I personally, and I have made this statement before, why can't the Cayman Islands, we ourselves, finance, find some way to finance the port so uh, that we're not dependent on any outside entity? Um, economy of the Cayman Islands, pretty strong as it stands now. Yes, we have other financial obligations. There are many people who are concerned about losing control over a report. We see, for instance, um, in, in, in Jamaica, where now uh, the, uh, the Kingston uh, Norman Manley International Airport management of that Mexican company you know, is doing that. So people have concerns about having that control. Uh, yeah. Is one of the options the possibility that the Cayman Islands government will find a way to finance, if not all of it, at least a controlling interest in it so that it remains, the, the, the port facility remains under the control of the Cayman Islands. When the outline business case was um, started, it was before we were actually in government, but the outline business case looked at it and said, yes, this should go there's an opportunity here. It should go to a business case. We were the ones involved in moving it to the business case itself. At that point in time, the country was out of ratio, and, and there was no um, mechanism in place to where the country could contribute or be involved in the financing. But what we did was uh, we drew some stipulations around the agreement. Number one was that the Port Authority of the Cayman Islands would be the managing company. Right? which would mean that we would take advantage of, of exactly what we take advantage of today. You know, we have infrastructure, but we have Caymanians that are extremely capable and doing an excellent job of running it. Um, then we looked at how do we make sure that this, this highway, so to speak, that gets them into the country puts them in a position that the money moves from the ships to the country itself. So no upland development was written into when you looked at developing the peers themselves. 
And then the last part of it was the, the need for the cargo facility and creating the revenue stream that would be able to pay for the cargo facility without having to tax or charge the cargo coming into the port itself with that revenue stream by growing that revenue stream to a, a cost base that would mean we would have to charge on each container cost of living goes up. So we believe that the model that we've been able to fine tune, realizing that this is a capital project that is going to be built in this country, it will be built by as much labor as can be provided by the Caymanians themselves as the companies build it. It, it, it will be a licensing agreement and 25 years, um, the numbers sh- are proposed to work that 25 years it vests back into the ownership. So it's basically a way of financing it, um, designing and building it that the, the mortgage on it, so to speak, is paid off after 25 years and owned by the country. So the country has given the license to build this and 100% of it will be vested in it. If we had done this 25 years ago, 100% of the income from that dock would be going to the Port Authority now. But the, the way to look at this is that there's no risk, you know, which we hear, um, what happens if you can't make the debt service, okay? With the cruise ships, cruise lines involved in the financing of it themselves and the throughput, then you know that the loan will be paid off. You also know that, that we are going to run it management and take advantage of it, and it's going to create that um, access and the opportunity for growing the business itself. So this is the model that's available. This is the model that's going to be presented. At the end of the day, um, we believe that we're very comfortable with with what this offers, and it's something that's been used um, globally for a number of years. The the only thing I'd I'd add to to that is that the, the repayment of this, the proposal is that it's paid from future revenue. Mm-hmm. In other words, we, we're not taking current revenue streams, which are needed for, for other things like like education and, and, and the development of schools and roads and whatever it is. It's, it's, this is proposed to be paid for by, the, essentially, the, the cruise passengers as they, as they come over. Without impacting other, other With, sectors. Without impacting other revenue streams. Okay. We have, uh, I, I encourage uh, people to send in uh, messages on our WhatsApp, and I have s- uh, s- several of them. I'm going to try to cover a few of them because we've closed the phone lines off now. People have continue to call in, and we uh, apologize for that, but, you know, we do have a time limit. Uh, it says, good morning. I've listened to both sides of the port discussion But at this point, not really sure if I'm for or against it. I know that Mr. McLaughlin um, and his opposition uh, colleagues were strongly opposed to it during the time uh, that McKeever Bush was leader and strongly recommended the port. Now, if Mr. McLaughlin can say what made him change his position, perhaps, uh, that will help me make an informed decision. No, I've never been opposed to the development of the cruise port. Uh, what I was opposed to was the was the process that was being used at the time, uh, and the the fact that at that time, check was chosen without there being a proper um, bid and, and tender process. But the the idea, the concept of a of a cruise berthing, I can't. I think there was some discussion for a long time, even in my own mind, about where we should actually cite it. Uh, but there was never any question in my mind about. The fact that if Cayman wanted to continue to be part of of the um, of the cruise business, that we could no we could not simply be an outlier as we are, being the only jurisdiction at which they call in the region that doesn't actually have proper berthing facilities. Mm-hmm. Okay, and another one. Uh, this one is pretty long. I'll try to paraphrase. Part of it says, "Good morning uh, to uh, all of you." I would like to add. Uh, to what one of the callers said earlier in regards to unemployment. Caymanians, including myself, have been called for interviews at various hotels um, on the West Bay Road. After having uh, promised and uh, pleased interviews according, promising and pleasing interviews according to the interviewers, applicants are being turned um, down 
days later when asked for the reason why they tend to give unethical reasons as well as going to the extent of giving false statements about the applicant. These reports have been submitted uh, to the Labor Office as well as the Immigration and there is nothing being done to investigate these matters. Uh, I repeat, I am also a victim myself. I think the government should uh, compel employers to interview these applicants in regards to uh, uh, the situation. Something has to be done. Um, uh, uh, what else it says here? Um, to add uh, this, uh, these reports uh, with uh, trails of email information have all uh, been submitted uh, to government uh, on occasions as well. So this person is talking about the bias in, <coughs> in, in employment, interviewing, and employers not being right. genuine when they interview Caymanians right. for jobs. Well, l l let me just say this as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, unemployment was at a high of 10.5% um, in 2012. The last um, ESO put it at 3.4 um, overall. And for Caymanians, 5.2. <coughs> so we have made huge strides, I think, over the course of the last few years in, in reducing unemployment um, and the numbers I think are going to are going to show next time around that that it's uh, unemployment has fallen further but we recognize I certainly recognize that there are structural issues that we have and other and some attitudinal um, issues that we have with respect to employing Caymanians so that is part and parcel of the decision to to create this new entity called work to amalgamate the functions of the Department of, of Labor and the the immigration, and in other words, the work permit, and so that that we have all of these numbers and and and, and all of this data in one place, managed by one office, so that you don't have the disconnect, which is often the case now. So that that should improve our our ability to analyze and to manage these these labor issues. But we're going further. And you, you will know, OC, that I have proposed the, the creation of a Fair Employment Commission. That legislation, I'm hopeful, I will bring to the House in November to actually establish the commission. That is going to operate in, in, in a way similar to perhaps the, the Ombudsman Office. So we'll have investigators. So uh, you can come in and you make a complaint about unfair employment practice the investigator will go out investigate it and and we'll be able to deal with these issues i hope in a much more effective way because as i say we although we have done as a government i think with, without wishing to seem to, to to pat my own self on the shoulder um, or my government on, on the shoulder we have done i think a, a, a very good job in overall improving the economic conditions in the country because that is what allows for for full employment. But with twenty two or twenty three thousand people on work permit, there really should be no Caymanian who is willing and able to work who isn't employed. And that's the bit that we we've, we've got that's the gap that we've still got to to, to get over. Mm -hmm. And and we're doing everything we can and as quickly as we can to put in place the mechanisms to reduce the instances of the sort of thing happening. Okay, I, I want to give both of you an opportunity for closing comments, but before uh, we go there, we haven't spoken much, uh, any at all, really, about, uh, uh, well, I think it was mentioned, about the referendum. And this, um, uh, listener says, uh, uh, please ask the, the members uh, for their reason for not having a referendum. One would believe this is something uh, they would embrace as it would solidify their mandate to build the crew's prayers. Now, when when... If they listen to uh, what the dip deputy premier said, we're still waiting for additional information to come in. So it would seem to me, and this is just my view, to be a little bit premature to have a referendum if they're saying that the referendum will allow people an opportunity to get more information. If that information is not already uh, ready for them, why have a referendum until, until that is done? Minister? Mm -hmm. Well, let me say this. 
when we, when the the progressives uh, stood for election in 2013, if you look at the ma- manifesto there, it says quite clearly that we propose to to construct cruise berthing facilities in George in the Georgetown Harbor, mm-hmm. right? We we st- we started the process, or the process had been started before. We continued the process as the as the minister, uh, as the, the deputy mayor has said through the whole of the last term. It took us. It's taken us five years to get to this point because we we are insistent on doing things by the book properly because we cannot and we will not agree to commit the country to this kind of of expenditure and we and we are committed to ensuring that the environmental co- um, issues are properly investigated explored and it, if if it is still a goal that the, that any in environmental impact is is properly mitigated, so all of those things have taken a great deal of time to get to this point. So we had an election last May, last year May, and the progressives won the, the majority of seats, although not an absolute majority. So this time, I have a true coalition government. My coalition partners are the CDP, who also campaigned on the basis of a cruise and a number of independents. There was only one of the independents um, who had said on the platform that he did not support the cruise board. So of the 13 members that we have, 12 of us had campaigned on the basis that a cruise uh, facility was something that we would do. So I believe that we have the necessary mandate more than the, than the necessary mandate to, to proceed with this. The reality is that, and the Deputy Premier will speak to this more than, than I can, is that if we introduce a referendum at this stage, we effectively kill the project for this term. And there's no doubt in my mind, when you hear people like Mario Rankin one of the biggest opponents of the of the progressives that has ever existed. The, the people, the, the, the key spokespersons that I hear out there banging on, on the radio and elsewhere, are all ve- and have been vehemently opposed to the government. And now you've got the opposition, uh, the, the, the elected opposition, who have done what all politicians will do, see an opportunity too good, to let pass, and they have latched on to this. So what we have, you, ha- you have a, a number of people who oppose the, the port, the cruise port, on environmental grounds. And I, I, I believe that they hold those opinions honestly. But the largest uh, percentage of those people that are out there banging on about this are people who have political and, in some cases, economic interests in seeing this project killed. So they know, they know full well that if, if we are forced down the road of a referendum, that is the end of this project for this term. I can't say it's the end forever because they may come and pick it up and run with it, whoever else takes over, mm-hmm. um, because that's what their, their game plan is. Um, but it certainly will kill the project for this term. The, the the commercial partners with us who are the cruise companies are simply not going to to wait around as the deputy premier has said their lives are, their their interests their business interests are are governed by um by the ability to, to to make a profit and if they do not think that the opportunity will avail itself for them to invest in development of a facility for Cayman that will accommodate the big ships that they are increasingly um, deploying, they are going to invest somewhere else so that they can have a destination. So so that's what it, that's what it comes down to. If, if we go to a referendum, that's the end of the project for this time. Okay. Mr. Kirkano, last. Um, thank you very much. I, I think it's, uh, I'll just echo the words of the Premier. We're at a critical stage with the project itself. We've taken our time over the last month to explain where we were. We we 
take very seriously when people say they need more information. We have tried to explain where that information is vested, when it will be coming out, and we have gone through step by step of all the information that is available. Uh, I I will say that some people have read that information, but it it is available on the website of my ministry, and it's been posted there. Um, We have perishable money, and we know that interest rates are going up. We know that we're going to get a time period um, when the bidders come back. We know that that if a referendum is going to take four or five months, whatever it would take, that the project is basically dead at this point. Um, I feel very uh, um, duty-bound to look for revenue streams, look for opportunities for for the country and for the ministry that I have been given responsibility for. I believe that what we have done is is find an opportunity going forward uh, to empower our cruise industry for growth. And when you go to a high school every year and see these young, bright, Okay, Magnons coming out looking for opportunities. That's our job every day, to find out how we're going to give opportunities. This is one. This is one that that uh, has really taken off in, in this country in the last four or five years, and, and people are, are heavily involved in it, heavily dependent on it, and heavily wanting to become more involved. So we've, we've hit all of the touch points, um, carrying capacity of the island, how is it going to be financed, how is the, the revenue streams going to help with the cost of living, how is it going to help with the cargo port. We're an island. We have to have a cargo port. We have to expand our cargo port. So we go forward. Um, we work every day to make this happen. We're not afraid to make the decision. We're moving forward, and we believe it's certainly in the best interest of the country. Thank you. I want to thank, I want to thank both of you. Um, for being on the show this morning. I also want to thank our sponsor, Cayman Airways. Uh, um, they are now offering daily flights, nonstop flights from Grand Cayman to New York City uh, starting this December. So for all of you, those of you who are interested in traveling or who have to travel, call Cayman Airways reservations at 949-2311. Contact a travel agent or visit caymanairways.com to book your flights today. I want to thank you, our listening and viewing audience, for allowing Radio Cayman and, by extension, for the record, into your homes, into your vehicles, as you traverse the busy roads of the Cayman Islands, into your places of work, whether it be an office cubicle or if you're working in the outdoors. I want to apologize also for those who uh, tried to call in and were unable to simply because we there was a limitation on time that we had, even though we went over uh, well over our time uh, this morning. I uh, want to remind you that we are brothers and our sisters keepers. There is always someone out there who's less fortunate than we are, and I ask you to extend a helping hand to them. If you can't do that, then I suggest you donate to a worthy charity because we always want to consider those who need, not necessarily those who want or even those who crave. Say to you, have a great day. Continue to support your radio station, Radio Cayman. Join Sterling Dwayne Banks at 1215 for talk today, and as usual, we ask the good Lord to bless these three beautiful, wonderful Cayman Islands. For the Record is brought to you by Fidelity Bank. For all your banking and pension needs, call or visit a Fidelity branch today. Vamped Motors, the only authorized Ford and Toyota dealerships serving the Cayman Islands. And Cayman Pharmacy Group, with locations in West Base and Professional Pharmacy at CTMH Doctors Hospital. The Cayman Pharmacy Group has a location for you just around the corner. And Seaboard Marine. With over 35 shipping ports, find your shipping solution by calling Seaboard Marine at 949-4977. Shaken yet standing firm. This is Radio Cayman in the Cayman Islands.